Friends, welcome to Tarunayas. Today we will be discussing daily current affairs of 12th of November 2022. So let's start with the first news of the day. The first news is about the Law Commission, Law Commission of India. So why this was in news? The retired High Court Chief Justice, Justice Ritu Raj Avasthi, has been appointed as the chairperson of the Law Commission. So let's discuss what Law Commission is. Basically, Law Commission is a non-statutory body of the which is uh, constituted by the notification from the government of India. By non-statutory means that there is no act uh, passed by the Indian Parliament uh, to establish this body, and this body is not even mentioned in the Constitution of India. Therefore, this is a non-statutory body, and it is established by a notification by the government of India. All right. So uh, the first commission, the first law commission, was established in India during the British time in the by the Charter Act of 1833, and the first law commission of uh, independent India was headed by by uh, by M. Stelwad. By M. Stelwad, he was the first law commission uh, chairperson of the first law commission of India. Basically, the work of the first law commission during the British uh, British time, British colonial rule, it was to consolidate and codify the Indian laws. So, in the so therefore, in eighteen sixty, under the commission headed by the T. B. Macaulay, he had codified Indian laws into Indian Penal Code that still continues in India with certain some reforms and modification or amendment time to time according to. the exigencies of the time so if we look at the first uh, law commission which was formed during the british colonial time in 1835 it was by it was headed by lord uh, t b macaulay please pardon me because i have um, i have i have caught cold the tenure of the law commission is uh, of 3 years and the law commission shall on a reference made to it by the central government or the suo moto undertake research in law and review of existing laws in india making reforms therein and enacting the new legislations see what is the what is the function of the law commission basically if the government of india gives law commission any reference with respect to any law or to research into the conditions um, into the maturity of the conditions uh, to frame the law because because the legislation or the law is is being framed by the by the parliament of india and not by the law commission law commission purpose is only the research permission that is that means it is to look into the into the maturity of the conditions if they have been fulfilled by the socio economic realities of the country or not so if we consider the example of uniform civil code as we had discussed in one of the editorials you would see the law commission had recommended that there are not enough mature conditions to implement the ucc so basically basically the provision i mean the idea of ucc it was referred by the government of india to the to law commission to look into its implementability and practicality so this is the function of the function of the law commission law commission shall also undertake the studies and research for bringing reforms in the justice delivery system for elimination of the delay speedy disposal of case um, and reduction in the cost of litigation the next news of the day is about the himalayan grey langur so this is the himalayan grey langur which is found in the himalayan region of uh, of our country so please pardon me for the map so this is the india and uh, in this portion um, the himalayan langur is found and uh, this, there was a study which was con- con- conducted in the himachal pradesh himachal pradesh and they had found that the same species of the himalayan grey grey langur which are found in two geographically distinct areas which are approximately 230 meters apart have developed different food habits have developed to different food habits so one is dependent upon the fruits and the other one is dependent upon the flowers so let's see what the so let's see what the study says so according to the study the difference in the altitude altitude means so altitude means the height in common parlance 
the height but altitude is measured from the from the sea level so if this is the sea level so altitude will be measured like this all right so difference in the altitude make a primate species in the same himalayan habit choose between flowers and fruits as food options the source is the hindu so himalayan grey langur or chamba sacred langur as they are known they are colubrine that means they are dependent upon fruits they are colubrine it is endangered species in in the iucn red list in the iucn red list and it is endangered because its population is estimated to be less than 1500 mature individuals in a group of 15 to 16 because himalayan langurs and basically langurs they stay in groups they stay in group so there is alpha male and alpha female heading the group and there are their children and uh, other uh, members of the other members of the group so basically langurs they stay in group and because the primate the primates are what they are social creatures they are social creatures sorry not creatures but social creatures so because they have the habit of socialization socializing so they stay in groups the study was conducted in the kala top hajar wildlife sanctuary which is in himachal pradesh the next news of the day is about place in news kherson has been in news for for a while because russia has russia has desi decided to withdraw from the from kherson we know that ukraine and russia war started in the february 2022 and it has been more than 9 months since the war started and russia incursed in the territory of uh, of ukraine and it had even reached up to the up to the city of kyiv which is the capital city of the capital city of the ukraine so if you look at this is the kherson provincia province and this is the crimea peninsula and this is black sea and this is the sea of azov so and this is the this is the kerch strait this is the kerch strait uh, connecting sea of azov to black sea and now here if you will look here it will be you can see the turkey and there will be strait of dardanelles and the strait of bosphorus which will connect the black sea to the to the mediterranean sea to the mediterranean sea so this is the kherson province and this crimea peninsula was annexed by russia in the year 2014 and after um, and this is the zaporizhia and where the where the nuclear power facility was attacked by the russian forces and um, this is an anher hodar power plant and this is the kherson province so sometimes in upsc if you look at the previous year question the place in news had been asked and how they were asked they were uh, the candidates were supposed to choose the correct match of the place in news with the with the uh, with the country that it is associated with all right with the country that it is associated with so press in news was the kherson and you can remember it by that russian forces had retreated from the they have decided to retreat from the kherson the news has been taken from the hindu the next news of the day is about the kaveri south wildlife sanctuary we are already aware of the kaveri wildlife sanctuary which is in the state of karnataka however recently the tamil nadu government has declared the kaveri south wildlife sanctuary as the new wildlife sanctuary in the in the state and uh, there are other wildlife sanctuary by the name kaveri is the kaveri wildlife sanctuary in the state of karnataka and kaveri north wildlife sanctuary in the state of tamil nadu so let's see the complete news recently the tamil nadu government has notified the kaveri south wildlife sanctuary which will be the 17th wildlife sanctuary in the state the news has been taken from the indian express what are the main points basically the sanctuary uh, it will be spread across the reserve of krishnagiri and dharmapuri district the sanctuary it adjoins the kaveri north wildlife sanctuary in the state of tamil nadu and kaveri wildlife sanctuary in the state of karnataka the declared landscape lends continuity to the nilgiri biosphere reserve which is spread through the three states of karnataka tamil nadu 
तमिलनाडु एंड केरला सो बायोस्फीयर रिजर्व थ्रू टू टाइगर रिजर्व एंड वन वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी दैट इज दैट इज टू टाइगर रिजर्व विच आर सत्यमंगलम टाइगर रिजर्व ऑफ तमिलनाडु बी आर टी टाइगर रिजर्व ऑफ कर्नाटका एंड मलाई महादेश्वर वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी सो बेसिकली दिस लैंडस्केप इट विल लेंड कॉन्टीन्यू टू कॉन्टीन्यूटी टू द नीलगिरी बायोस्फेयर थ्रू दीज टू टाइगर रिजर्व एंड वन वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी ना हाउ डज अ स्टेट इज एम्पावर टू डिक्लेयर अ वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी और अ नेशनल पार्क सी बेसिकली द बाउंड्री ऑफ द नेशनल पार्क कैन नॉट बी चेंज विदाउट द परमिशन ऑफ द नेशनल बोर्ड फॉर वाइल्ड लाइफ एंड ऑल्सो इट कैन नॉट बी डाउनग्रेडेड टू द पोजिशन ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी हाउ एवर अ स्टेट कैन डिक्लेयर द एरिया एज द वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी और द नेशनल पार्क अंडर द under the provisions provided in the wildlife protection act of 1972 so therefore the tamil nadu government has notified the wild kaveri south wildlife sanctuary under section 26a of the wpa 1972 the sanctuary it supports over 35 species of mammals and 238 species of the of the birds the wildlife sanctuary can however be upgraded to the status of national park Now, next news of the day is about the National Population Register. Now, this has been a news for a very long time. However, we have to understand what this National Population Register means, and it is different from the National Citizen Census, or uh, uh, which is uh, which is the census, or which is the calculate. I mean, estimation of the citizens of the country, and there is a difference between the citizens and the residents. there is a difference between the citizens and the residents so the national population register estimates the population of the residents of the country and not the citizens of the country so who are the residents of the country basically any person whether a citizen of the country or a foreign foreign citizen here in india lives or stays in india up to the up to 6 months 6 months or more becomes a resident of the country and this is the reason why the nri are called as non resident indians because they do not normally reside in india however they do have the indian citizenship but they are non resident that means they have not they come and go and that means they have they have not stayed for uh, minimum 6 months of the minimum 6 months of time now why this was in news recently the union home ministry this is a uh, home ministry in his annual in its annual report sorry there is that said that there is a need to update the national population register and what all parameters are counted in the npr the first is your uh, the first is the change in the birth in the death and the migration and these are the these are the three important parameters that estimates the demography that estimates the demography of the of the country so these parameters or these particulars are collected for each family and for the and for each individual so basically npr is a register of usual usual resident of the country it includes both residents as well as non citizens citizens means the people who enjoy who enjoy the state services the fundamental rights and they have claim over the state they have claim over the state the non citizens do not enjoy certain fundamental rights however the rights which are given enshrined in the constitutions and related with the dignity of the human being are are extended to the non citizens as well so according to the citizenship registration of citizens and issue of the national identity card rules 2003 which are in accordance with the citizenship act of citizenship act of 1955 so the those who are the usual resident of uh, of a of a country they are to be they are to be registered in the npr and this is the definition of the of the usual resident which i have already discussed with you it is being prepared at the local village sun, uh, village sub town this is sub town sub district district state national level under the provision of citizenship act of 1955 and the rules therein in in the year 2003 the first npr it was prepared in the year 2010 along with the census along with the census 2011 and thus there is a need to update this data 
which was done during the 2015 by conducting door to door survey the demographic details of every individual are required on 21 points that includes the date and place of birth of the parents the last place of the residence the pan number aadhar voter id card the driving license mobile number etc etc so npr which was done in the year 2010 the data was collected on the 15 points and now the data in the updation of the npr will be collected on 21 points and it did not include data in place of birth of parents and the last place of residence however in the new updated npr it will be contained the next news of the day is about the ola kudda eju nalatha now what is this this is basically an umbrella an umbrella with that can be hold an umbrella that can be worn as a headgear now let's see what this ola kudda eju nalath means basically farkland which is one of, which is an ngo and sk pot uh, sk potakad culture center they host the ola kudda eju nalath at sk potakad culture center in kozhikode that is in kerala so basically this art of ola kudda belongs to the state of kerala now what are the main points see the main point is this ola kudda eju nalath it is a festival of palm leaves umbrella and it is one first of its kind in india the festival not only aims to promote the ola kudda but it also reimagine its way to make it more to make it a more popular product among the people so ola kudda it has a sociologist cultural significance in in uh, in kerala given its extensive use in the rituals in thayam thayam is a festival again of temple festival and other performing arts so yeah it's a it's an art from the kerala thayam you can refer to the art and culture by nitin singhania and you will find thayam there from the state of kerala so basically these umbrellas are made using the dried palm leaves bamboo and the cane and they come in a variety of shades shades like shapes that is thoppi kudda which is which is fit which fits on the head and kala kudda that resembles the umbrella so you can look into the figure this is thoppi kudda it is worn over the head and this is the umbrella that is that is ola kudda kala kudda kala kudda kal kudda and thoppi thoppi kudda So that's it for today thank you so much for watching Tarun IS have a nice day